One of the biggest questions in college football right now is tampering. Is it actually a thing that is hurting the sport and what can be done about it? We'll dive into that as well as talk about Connor Vanover and his new stop at Oral Roberts and why Razorback fans need to wish him the best of luck, as well as some other nonsense here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. <laughs> Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I'm your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as uh, there's a lot of things going on in the sports world that are driving our attention and everything. And Honestly, for uh, Razorback sports, uh, we got Razorback baseball going on. Uh, football slows down. Basketball slows down. And, you know, it's kind of just getting into the do- closer and closer to the dog days of summer, which, hey, we'll still have fun with that. We'll still have uh, plenty of things to talk about. We'll have various guests on to, to dive into all those things, too. But I-, I wanted to do this podcast today on something that I that I feel pretty passionately about and something that is a problem in college football, maybe in college sports in general, and something that I feel like is going to be very difficult to find a solution for it. And if that, of course, I am talking about is tampering. Now, tampering is something that's gone on a lot in sports forever. Uh, Professional sports especially can't have it. Um, You know, there's rules against it, at least publicly uh, speaking about particular players that don't play for your teams or, or whatever it may be. Tampering is something that goes on, but it's so difficult to try to police and try to regulate. And this is something that Arkansas has actually experienced uh, just in their first couple of years when it comes to the transfer portal and being immediately eligible and all those things, too. And the COVID year kind of threw things uh, a lot of things into a loop as well. Uh, when last year, around this time, in fact, a little... Uh, I guess, you know, right after spring practice last year, whenever that officially ended for Arkansas, Mike Woods ended up leaving Arkansas two days after the spring game. And then very shortly after announcing he's entered into the portal, he goes to Oklahoma to play for Lincoln Riley. Uh, That, I think everybody kind of knew that there was a legitimate issue, or at least that issue right there was a legitimate thing for when it comes to tampering and how, that's a sucky thing to do. It's a sucky thing for Coach Lincoln Riley at the time at Oklahoma to do. It was a sucky thing for Mike Woods to do. It was a sucky thing. And I know, but I, you know, sometimes I get tired of everybody just saying, well, you know, let the, it's the player's ultimate decision. Let them, you know, it's their life. They got to be able to do what they want to do. Okay. But at some point in time, you got to say, hey, that was a sucky thing. Do what you want. Of course, you have the freedom to do what you want. But that's a crappy thing to do. Call it out for what it is. And that's what it was last year. And this has kind of really just come full force once again, where Jordan Addison, who was the Blitnikoff winner last year for Pitt, which still think Traylon Burks was better. That's neither here nor there. But he was the top wide receiver last year. And he's one of the top returning players in the 2022 season. And Pitt, obviously is uh, really excited to have him. He was one of Kenny Pickett's best wide receivers. No, Kenny Pickett moved on, and he just completed his sophomore season, so he's still got one more year to play. He, though, uh, but as good as that all that sounds, last week he decides to enter into the transfer portal. Just right after spring practice ends, enters into the transfer portal. And when he entered into the transfer portal, this is all according to ESPN, uh, he says that Pitt, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Pitt remains an option for him to return, but he also may need to move on and possibly uh, go on to somewhere else. Which, at the point in time, he's not going back to Pitt because his uh, option to withdraw from the transfer portal is already passed on May first, so he's not going back to Pitt. But the sources that told ESPN said that Pitt coach Pat Narduzzi caught wind of USC as a possible destination and called Trojan uh, coach Lincoln Riley multiple times on Friday to express, express his displeasure 
Pitt officials suspect that tampering could not have occurred, could have occurred, and USC did not immediately return the quest for comments on Friday night. So essentially what it sounds like, and we don't know exactly where Jordan Addison, at least at this point in time, has officially announced where he will be transferring to, although USC seems to be the one that uh, is making a lot of sense, especially with the sources happening that way. But it's amazing and coincidental that it happens to be Lincoln Riley again, something that Arkansas fans knew about with what he did with Mike Woods. This is bad. Like this is this is really lame. And I think that especially at the time frame of when you're transferring out after spring ball is concluded, after all of that, when you went through all the drills, you went through all the practices, and then you just leave your team days after it comes to an end, not because you're unhappy, not because of the situation that you end with the coach or anything like that not because of anything that the school has done or is not doing. You're leaving simply because somebody else from a different school needed somebody needed some help at wide receiver. And so they went out and they tried to contact the best wide receiver that was already on a team and said, hey, if you come here, we'll give you a better deal than what you're getting there. And of course, as a college kid, you're willing to do that. And you're, that's something you're definitely willing to be interested in. And... It's lame. It's absolutely lame. Now, some of you may say, well, you don't know about what the situation he has with the coach or with the team or with the program or anything like that. Okay, well, I do know that he finished the season, didn't transfer. Went to the bowl game, didn't transfer. After the bowl game, didn't transfer. Went through all of spring practice, didn't transfer. But now he decides to transfer. I have a hard time believing that if he was upset or had displeasure with coaches or anything like that, he would just say peace after it's all said and done when you're just going to get ready for summer camps and workouts and all those things too. I have a hard time believing that. What it is is that USC and Lincoln Riley, because they know they're desperate at a position, they go out and they find somebody that's on another team and says, come on by, come on over. We, we'll get you set up. I hate that. I hate that. And – the ultimate thing is, is I believe it's not, and I know we're using the Lincoln Riley situation here because again, this is, has something to do with Arkansas, but I do believe that it goes on a lot more often than we think. I think anytime, anytime you hear of a great player who is a star of a team, especially at a high level college uh, football program, enter into the transfer portal at a very random and weird time. And then immediately go soon after to that other school that people were reporting that he'd end up going to put all the pieces together. You can kind of figure out that's that's tampering and that's something that cannot and should not occur in college football. But the ultimate question becomes of what can you actually do about it? Like of all the things that are going on in college football, there's a lot of policies. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of stuff that. So many of us wish that they could fix, that they could adjust, that they could handle better, whatever it may be. There's a lot of that. So I think it's tough to just say, okay, well, this should be priority number one because there's so many things going on and so much transformation and all that. But there has got to be a way to at least help this, help the tampering, whatever it may be. And these are just some solutions or at least some ideas that I wanted to throw up and, and see if they stick or anything like that. And maybe some of you will agree or disagree, whatever. But one of the things that I think that would really be helpful is since it's NIL and we know that a lot of this is NIL based, don't allow players who transfer to for, for the first year to have any NIL deals with that new school. Now, I know that some people are going to say, that ah, that's harsh. How do you do that? What's going on with the blah, 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 blah. I think that that would be something that would go a long way. And I, you'd have to, of course, have the policing of the NIL stuff and whatever it may be. But I think that that would be something that would go a long way in trying to curb a lot of the tampering that goes on because you wouldn't be able to offer these kids anything new at the new school when it comes to high-level NIL deals to try to take them away. If there's a way, and it doesn't even have to be a year. It could be like six months, could be the season, whatever. It, it, there's got to be something that maybe you could put a limit on that as well. 
I think another thing that you could possibly do is have it to where you have a very limited time of entering into the transfer portal and it's a, a time frame. And then once that time frame comes to an end, you, you can't, you know, you can't jump into the portal. And this whole like after spring practice, after the spring semester, I think that that I don't think you could, should be allowed to transfer after if you go through spring practice. That's just me. That's just me. I think that if there was some way that you could do it after the football season ends or anything like that, or, you know, even like right before spring practice, like something like that. I don't know. It's just going through spring practice when that coaching staff and that team is counting on you to be a part of their roster next year. And then you leaving them high and dry uh, at, after the spring ends to where they were counting on you to be there. And now they're going to have to go out and try to find a replacement for you when a lot of the players that may have been normally available that you normally would have gone after have already gone to their own schools because they all transferred in early. You're kind of left holding the bag. I feel like there needs to be some sort of addressing to that. Try to make it to where you know players have limitations on when they can transfer or when they can enter into the portal to try to keep these types of things from happening. To where because here's what essentially happened. Because I'm start I lose I keep continuing to lose a lot of respect for Lincoln Riley. I think that uh, he's a pompous dude that thinks that he's going to go over from Oklahoma to USC and do so much better, and he's not. Everyone thinks that he's going to go to USC. Watch out. The Pac-12 and USC are so light years far away from being even a relevant football program compared to what the rest of the nation has over here in the SEC, um, you know, even in the ACC, some teams in the big – like they're in their own little world over there. And if anybody thinks that he's just going to suddenly turn USC into a powerhouse like Pete Carroll was once able to do – He's got a, they got another thing coming. It's I I predict they are going to fail miserably at USC. Um, but either way, that's neither here nor there. I just don't understand like what because basically what happened was is that he got over there, he thought he had a good roster, he thought he was mixing it up. He goes through strings practice, he's like, My wide receivers aren't very good. Or my I don't have enough wide receivers that are very good. So instead of just working with what you got, instead of trying to, you know, just you know, go through what's in the portal already, guys that are already looking to transfer. You're like, no, those guys aren't good enough. I'm going to go after a guy who's already on another team and entice him to leave that team, to leave that team hanging dry, high on dry, to leave that coaching staff and come play with me. And that just, that's a crappy thing to do. That's a crappy thing to do. And the other solution, and again, this would be something that's really, really difficult to do. Because I know that there's so many different ways to get around it. But I think that if you made a punishment so harsh that if anybody, any coach or anybody got caught tampering, then there would be a one-year ban from college football. I mean, I think something like that would at least make it to where it was so difficult to try to do. And coaches, of course, would not want their name involved. And, of course, they'd go through other people, too, and I get that. But at least make it to where it's not so painfully obvious when Lincoln Riley is using the subtlety of a baboon to go after a wide receiver that's already at another school and everybody just kind of shrugs their shoulders like, ah, what are you going to do? No, do something. <clears throat> at least have something in place to possibly scare people, possibly make them think twice, possibly make them really go around above and beyond to try to even make it possible. because. It would at least make it and me and a lot of others feel a little bit better about the current process that they find themselves in. So, again, I don't know what all that could work. I don't know if anything is going to work. I don't think you're ever going to fully stop it. But I do believe there has to be some things done uh, to, to kind of put it all to rest. And, then, and you know, Arkansas, you know, they've, they've had transfers this year. And if they had any sort of tampering, that's bad. So I'm not just saying, oh, it's only bad when other schools do it. And if my school does it, it's okay. No, I think it would be bad no matter what. If I found out that Sam Pittman and the staff were tampering, I I would be upset by that. I think that would be really lame. So don't mis don't misconstrue the message here. Um, it, it just can't happen anywhere. I'm just saying that even though it happens, even though it runs rampant, even though there's a lot of uncertainty about all these stuff with the transfer portal and all that, there has to be something done when you have star players leaving other programs to go to other programs just strictly because it's NIL and they get contacted before they even enter into the portal. They're told to enter into the portal. Don't like that. Something needs to change there, that is for sure. We're going to talk about 
Uh, Connor Vanover and his new stop and why Razorback fans need to cheer for him because that may be tough for some fans to do. But either way, we'll talk about that on the other side of the break. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so uh, I wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, Connor Vanover, who has officially entered in, or he did officially entered into the transfer portal a few weeks ago. And uh, he was kind of looking for a stop, and he announced yesterday via social media that he is going to be transferring over to Oral Roberts. The team in Arkansas has faced before, and uh, team actually Arkansas faced in the Sweet 16 just two years ago. Uh, which and he's making it known that he's going to go to Oral Roberts, which is funny because uh, I, Isaac McBride, who was one of the uh, top tier talents coming out of the state of Arkansas, I think he went to Kansas and he's ended up transferring around. Uh, he's actually playing at Oral Roberts as well. So if you can uh, think about that and where he's at. But anyways, uh, he's going to be joining him over there at Oral Roberts and uh, McBride was at Vanderbilt. Then he went to Oral Roberts. So, yeah, he's been all over the place. So uh, Van, uh, Vanover said, and this is according to the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Vanover said, being able to play with Isaac, again, was a big plus. We're good friends. He has, he's active in recruiting me to Oral Roberts. I'm excited to be teammates with him, really. Uh, of, of Teammates again. Okay. So he's going to have two seasons of eligibility remaining, which is crazy because it felt like he was – because he was at Arkansas for three years. He sat out one, played two, and he was at Cal one more year. And now he's going to have two more years of eligibility. That's pretty crazy. He also said, I think I work really well in Oral Roberts' system. I'll be able to do a lot of pick and rolls, pick and pops, especially. I think we can really do some damage there. He says, I think Coach Mills is a good guy. He's real smart and friendly and knows what he's doing. He wanted me real bad, so that was nice. The door just kind of opened for me to go to Oral Roberts. I'm looking forward to being there and getting to work. Now, say what you want about Connor Vanover and his time here at Arkansas. And I know that a lot of people got very frustrated with him many times, anytime he came in. Uh, because of his his uh, the things that he couldn't do or the type of player that people wanted him to be like that was that was always dumb and then there but what was equally as dumb is the people that were saying oh let's bring in Connor Vanover to guard this seven foot guy because hey he can't do any worse than what we have now yeah he could um, you know you got to trust Musselman to be able to do what he's doing with his players. And he can't just assume, oh, well, don't worry, this guy's big, so let's just throw him in there and it'll be fine. No, that was never the case either. But my whole point in bringing up Connor Vanover is similar to what I'll bring up with pretty much every player that ever will play for Arkansas and play for Eric Musselman and then transfer out to go play somewhere else. You got to wish him nothing but the best of luck. You know, it's it's hard enough to where, you know, you want your team to be so good and you want your team to, to be able to, you know, be that be that player that you want them to be, whether it's for their size, whether it's for their, uh, well, you know, whatever it is. Like you want them to have that. You want them to be so good at what they do and their craft that sometimes you, you know, you're really upset if they choose to go somewhere else or leave you because you had so much hype for them. You had so much promise for them or hope for them that when they leave, it kind of hurts. But the thing is, is that especially in Razorback basketball and especially with Eric Musselman and what he's doing, you have to be able to understand the roster movement and change that is going to come along with the program, and that includes bringing players in and sending players out. It's going to be an ever-revolving door here at Arkansas. And I know people may be resistant to that. People may not like that. But at the end of the day, folks, that's what's going to make this program better each and every year. It's going to make them better. Now, I'm not saying that they're only going to get better every year and, you know, they'll never do worse than an elite eight run. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that in order to achieve the type of team and the type of greatness that you need to have to be able to be that national championship contender, you have to kind of do what Arkansas is doing. And that's, I think what Eric Musselman has understood when he's treating his program as a NBA team. Hey, we're, we're, we're almost using you as employees. All right. You play for me, I coach for you. But if it doesn't work out, we need to separate. You know, we'll send you away or we'll let you go into the portal. And then I'll go and get somebody that will fit or somebody I'll think will better, will be better. That's just the way it's going to be. And you can't hate on it. 
I mean, you can be frustrated by it. You could wish that you could go the old fashioned way of recruiting kids out of high school and developing them for three years. And holy smokes, what a what a great Razorback. You know, that's that's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not in this day and age. And so you just kind of got to go along with how Musselman prepares these guys and how he uses his team and all those things to just get used to this and used to how it goes down. So I, my whole thing is that with Vanover or with any player that transfers out of Arkansas to go somewhere else, wish them nothing but the best of luck. Hopefully they do really well. I hope Connor Vanover goes over and averages 20 and 10 for Earl Roberts. And I hope that they don't play Arkansas because if they, I mean, well, of course, if they play Arkansas, Arkansas will win. But I'm just saying I'll root for him besides when he plays for Arkansas, uh, plays against Arkansas. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it all should be if you're a Razorback fan and everything. So just utilize that, understand that, and and make that happen, make that possible. Because I'm telling you folks, it's going to be a lot of fun to see uh, what he can do maybe in the new system. But it's also going to be a lot of fun to see who some of these new guys will and what they'll be able to do here in the Razorback basketball system as well. BetOnline.net and remains your number one source for all betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball season with BetOnline.net. It's your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoff and esports and more. Head to the website or use your mobile device today to see all the trends and actions at BetOnline.net where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, and then the uh, final segment, I just wanted to bring this up too because I thought this was really cool. A huge, huge, huge congratulations to Trey Wade, former Razorback basketball player that uh, finished up his career as a college basketball player this past year with Arkansas. Uh, For him, not only trying to his hand at the NFL, but making the Arizona Cardinals rookie camp. He made the Arizona Cardinals rookie camp to, to give him a shot at it. And I just think this is awesome. You know, we talk about players when they move on from Arkansas and you're rooting for them. This is something that's really awesome that I wish more basketball players would consider just giving it a shot, especially ones that are able-bodied to be able to wake and work. I mean, we've seen a lot of occasions and a lot of cases of – great basketball players with great athleticism making it to the next level in the NFL just because they're that good of an athlete. You know, Antonio Gates, when he played basketball and how great he was, uh, I guess it was uh, Olsen also, too, was, was a great basketball player. Um, you know, we see examples of guys like that that uh, are just, you know, able to do so many different things, but they find their own niche in the NFL. And we see that even not even just basketball players, but even baseball players. You know, Kyler Murray and Jameis Winston were like first round picks in Major League Baseball because they were that good, but they chose football. Works out for them. But, you know, dual start athletes, it kind of gives them those opportunities to try other things if it doesn't work out. And that's what I love about uh, what this is going on with Trey Wade. And I hope it works out for him. I really do. He's a big bodied guy. Um, he might be able to find his, his niche at tight end, but just think about, that type of opportunity that would come where nothing gets Trey Wade. He ain't playing in the NBA. He's not that good of a player. He's not going to play in the NBA. If anything, he would have a career maybe overseas, maybe in the G League, whatever it may be. Don't make much money, whatever. But if he sees, hey, I feel like I could be a tight end. You know, I feel like I could, you know, be this big bodied athlete that could help a team out. And as long as I can develop my craft and catch balls and weren't running at a block and all those things then I can find my way and make some money in the NFL too, or maybe in the USFL, you know, or, or whatever that may be when it comes to other things going on there too. So I just think it's awesome that Trey Wade's doing this and I'm glad he's doing it. And I wish more football player or basketball players would consider that possibility if the NBA doesn't work out. If again, if they're able bodied, you can't have like, you know, Chris likes out there playing football, but um, you know, if you're, if you're able to have a, a body type that can work in the NFL, try your hand at it, give it a shot, see how it goes. What's the worst thing that can happen. They tell you, no, Basketball could still be there for you, too, or you just move on with the next chapter of your life, whatever it may be. So, but a huge shout-out to Trey Wade for making the Arizona Cardinals rookie camp. Wish him nothing but the best of luck, and hopefully he's able to make it all happen. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razor X podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.